when you spend 10 billion dollars on a space telescope, you have to justify it. It's also something of a tradition for astronomers to celebrate the start of science operations on a new telescope with a selection of images to showcase exactly what it can do. That's exactly what NASA will do when the James Webb Space Telescope or Webb for short and is ready for science. We are planning a series of WOW images to be released at the end of commissioning when we start normal science operations that are designed to showcase what this telescope can do," said Jen Rigby, Web Operations Project Scientist. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center at a press briefing in January. They will showcase all four science instruments and they will really knock everybody's socks off. So join me as I show you jaw-dropping WOW images planned by NASA as James Webb Space Telescope's journey ends. Here's what to expect and when. The plan is to release images at one time and not as they are taken. That could mean that the world will have to wait a while because a lot of testing needs to be done in the wake of Webb being fully developed last weekend. Webb is up there to look for Cosmic Dawn, the first stars study black holes and examine exoplanet atmospheres, but the initial batch of images are likely just to be dropped dead gorgeous space images for general consumption. So expect to see a few Hubble vs Webb images that show off exactly what the new infrared space telescope is for as compared to the old ultraviolet visible space telescope. Just as interesting will be the Spitzer vs Webb images that compare the original infrared space telescope to its successor, though it's also likely that we'll see web images in combination with those two telescopes and those from the Chandra X-rays observatory. Either way, this is what we can expect to be in the running for Webb's initial WOW images. Number 5. The Pillars of Creation If NASA wants to starkly show just what Webb is capable of, then what better target than the so-called Pillars of Creation? an iconic shot taken in various wavelengths of light by Hubble. They are so named because the gas and dust are in the process of creating new stars, while also being eroded by the light from nearby stars that have recently formed. The pillars are composed of cool molecular hydrogen and dust that are being eroded by photoevaporation from the ultraviolet light of relatively close and hot stars. The stars then emerge from the EGGs which then are evaporated. These fingers of interstellar gases and dust in the Eagle Nebula is the constellation of serpents have already been taken in visible light and near infrared light by Hubble and could be as taste of what to expect from Webb. As this tweet makes clear, what price a Webb do over? Hashtag BFF in space, two views of pillars of creation captured by Hubble only. Left, visible light, right, infrared light. Penetrates much of the obscuring dust and gas and unveils a more unfamiliar view of pillars, giving you a taste of what to expect from at the rate ESA web. Number 4. The Horse Head Nebula. The nebula formed from a collapsing interstellar cloud of material and glows as it is illuminated by a nearby hot star. 1. The gas clouds surrounding the horse head have already dissipated but the jutting pillar is made of stronger stuff, thick clumps of material that is harder to erode. The darkness of the horse head is caused mostly by thick dust blocking the light of stars behind it. The lower part of the horse head's neck casts a shadow to the left. The visible dark nebula emerging from the gaseous complex is an active site of the formation of low-mass stars. The Horsehead Nebula strikes a memorable figure, illuminated from behind by a larger cloud of charged gas. Heated by a nearby star, the gas and dust form the familiar shape of an equine head. This is one of Hubble's most iconic the Horsehead Nebula or Barnard 33. 
in the constellation of Orion, which it imaged in near infrared in 2013. Should we expect a web style rehash of the great seahorse in the sky? Number 3, the Tarantula Nebula. We know that many of Webb's first test images will be of objects within the large Magellanic Cloud (LMC), an irregular dwarf galaxy that orbits our Milky Way galaxy. NASA says that's because it's close to the plane of the solar system and so easy for Webb to see regardless of the date it launched. If you recall, Webb was delayed and delayed. The Tarantula Nebula is known for its luminosity is so great that if it was as close to Earth as the Orion Nebula, the Tarantula Nebula would cast invisible shadows. In fact, it is the most active starburst region known in the local group of galaxies. The central region of the Tarantula Nebula contains thousands of massive stars which are blasting away material and generating intense radiation as well as strong stellar winds. These winds and the supernova events in the region heat up the gas to millions of degrees. Inside the LMC is the Tarantula Nebula. It's a famous target for astrophotography. Best thought of as a supermassive version of the Orion Nebula. It's the 100 times larger and the biggest star forming region in our part of the universe. It's so luminous that if it was as close to us as the Orion Nebula is about 1300 light years, it would cast a shadow on Earth at night. Number 2, a Webb Ultra Deep Field. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field in its extreme version is the deepest view of the universe yet obtained and will be until jade's takes over it stretches approximately 13 billion light years and includes approximately 10000 galaxies the hudf allows astronomers to put together snapshots of galaxies over many different eras so that they can tell a more complete story of how galaxies form and change The Hubble Space Telescope peered back in time to see galaxies of all shapes, sizes, colors and ages. The last Hubble Ultra Deep Field released in 2014 was observed in ultraviolet. This image allowed astronomers to study star formation in a region 5 to 10 billion light years away from us. In fact, the James Webb Space Telescope was built specifically for infrared images these are much less resolved less clear than optical images because of their longer wavelength with its much larger collecting area the web will be able to image the infrared at the same resolution detail that hubble could obtain in the optical part of the spectrum arguably the most important images taken by hubble are the hubble deep fields composite photographs that include small red shifted galaxies from when the universe was just 800 million years old given that web has a much larger mirror and will be able to image red galaxies around 250 million years after the big bang expect to see something similar though whether that will be the first tranche of show off images in anyone's guess number 1 The Monkey Head Nebula. The Monkey Head Nebula is a star forming region located 6400 light years away in the Orion constellation. To give it its formal name is a place where new stars are being born at a fierce and rapid rate. And these only newborn stars emit powerful streams of charged particles known as stellar winds that blow the gas and dust away. removing the ingredients necessary for future stars to be born dark dust streams among the glowing cosmic cloud to give the nebula its ape like appearance indeed it is one of many nebulae that look like animals here is another target of hubble that the aging space telescope has imaged in both visible and the near infrared 
a region of stars being born about 6400 light years away the monkey head nebula has a lot of dust clouds and glowing gas so could be a good show off target for well let us know what do you think about the jaw dropping wow images planned by nasa as web telescope's journey ends comment down below